Well, hello everyone. My name is Zachary O'Shea, and this is Box of Teeth. I have another horror theme monster for Dungeons Dragons 5th Edition right now for all of you. One iconic bit of sound that you often hear in horror movies or get referred to in a horror novel is, of course, a owl hooting. In fact, the Romans even believed that the screeching of owls was actually the call of vengeful spirits seeking the living. And that's where we develop today's monster, which is the screecher. Illuminated by spectral green feathers, this massive predator literally soars through the darkest thicket. And by that I mean this owl-like creature passes through trees and brush and branches as an apparition would. However, when it prepares to strike, its prey finds that it is actually a substantial being. Flaked horns rise from the size of its temple. They give it the same sort of profile as a horned owl. Its head can actually also swivel almost all the way around as that natural species can. Its eyes aren't owl-like exactly. Sure, they're large and they dominate its face, but they're actually blue translucent orbs that have enough of a glassy sheen that it makes a strange reflection of whatever the screecher is spying on. To round this out, this monster's terrible form, it doesn't have talons. Instead, it has five-fingered hands where the skin is so tight that it gives it a skeletal claw-like appearance and the nails are sharp enough to do some damage. So how did such a horrifying monstrosity come about? In this case, it was an arcane mishap, as it often is. A group of necromancers moved deep into a dark forest, one, to avoid populated centers because they didn't want to have to deal with the prejudice that their art carried, and two, they really didn't have a whole lot of interest in raising undead armies or anything to that effect. They just wanted to experiment with death magic when it comes to other living things, bears, squirrels, chipmunks, deer, whatever it was around them. Sure, they would animate a human corpse or two to do the menial work, but they really just wanted to be left alone. However, some druids really took offense to this, as one might expect, and one day they attacked this group and slaughtered them, but in turn many of them died as well, and the resulting fight really corrupted the dark heart of this forest. This necromancer order used owls as their symbol and often had owls as their familiar, and many of those familiars escaped. Already saturated with magic from being familiars, the owls that remained feasted on all the carnage like vultures would as opposed to owls because they needed something to eat, and they became more infused with necromantic magic. About a year later, the first screechers started to appear in the forest. One of the most horrific aspects of a screecher, however, is the fate of the creatures that it consumes. Like actual owls, it's unable to digest bones and fur, so its gullet becomes a de facto unhollowed grave. This means the spirits of those eaten are tormented amid tumbled, broken bones. That is, until the screecher vomits up a large-sized pellet. These pellets of phlegm and biodebris inevitably spawn skeletons. These mad spirits seek to end their pain by stealing the bones of the living to kind of complete themselves and make themselves intact once again. They're also terrified of being eaten by the screecher once more. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the screecher statistics for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. The screecher is a challenge rating 5 large monstrosity that is unaligned. It's really an animal when you come down to it and it just wants to eat and protect its territory. It does have damage resistance to necrotic as well as bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Ability-wise it has flyby and incorporeal movement as well as keen senses when it comes to hearing or sight. Action-wise it does have multi-attack for a beak and claw attack. The beak does a decent amount of damage. The claws, which are really just hands, remember, do some damage, but also grapple on a successful hit. It also has Spectral Screech on a recharge of 5 or 6. Creatures within 60 feet of it have to succeed on a save or become frightened and restrained because they're paralyzed by fear. For the next minute, they get to repeat this save at the end of each turn. It does have one last recharge ability that ties back to what I mentioned earlier, which is Ghostly Pellet. It spits out the giant mucus ball that hits the ground, spawns 1d6 skeletons that are hostile to everything, including the Screecher, but they're also frightened of the Screecher, so they're not going to go over and attack it unless absolutely necessary. And even if the Screecher flies off or dies, the heroes still have to deal with those skeletons. 
I hope you enjoyed this creature. You can always use it to throw up against your heroes when they're in a dark forest, have them chased around by skeletons, but I'd love to hear how you would use it in your own campaign down in the comments below. You can find it and hundreds more horror-themed monsters, all for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, that are all perfectly free at boxofteeth.blogspot.com. If you're more interested in the non-Dungeons & Dragons role-playing projects that I have, or the horror fiction that I write that includes Sir Cat Breakers, a meek earth tale that is now available in Kindabella. First three episodes are out. Episode four drops this Saturday. So if you like Vampire Hunter D or just kind of post-apocalyptic sci-fi horror, which means you probably like Vampire Hunter D, please go check it out. You can always find it and everything else like I just mentioned on www.zacharyoshea.com as well. Thank you all for your time and your attention, and stay cool out there. It's pretty warm.